Hi everyone, this is Michelle with Stampin' Butterfly. I hope you're having a good night. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for my first online workshop. I'm gonna be doing these once a month on the third Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. So depending on which time zone you are, you'll need to convert that over. But wanted to give you a little bit of background of kind of how we're gonna run the, run the workshop and then um, we can take a look at the cards that we'll be making tonight. So first, we'll be making three cards each time we do the workshop, and I'll have a monthly host code. Well, actually, I'll have a host code for the event, so this is tonight's host code. So if you place a $35 order or more using that host code between today and Monday night, then you will receive the pieces to make the three projects tonight in the mail. And... Um, all the pieces will be cut and embossed. I just can't stamp them, so you'll have to use your own stamps. You can buy the ones I use, or you can sub them out for what you have on hand already. Um, the next thing, I'll post a door prize form later tonight, and if you go ahead and fill that out, then um, I will do a drawing on Monday and pick someone to win the completed card, so you'll be able to receive the three projects that we do or, or cards. And then you'll also get a free little goodie. So you'll get a pack of these embellishments, these little snowflake embellishments. Um, and then also, if you share the video, I'm gonna do a second drawing for anybody who shares the video and then comments below the video that say that you shared it, um, that you'll also get the completed card in the mail. So they'll be all stamped and glued and ready to go. You can just mail them out. Um, at the end of the night, I'll go ahead and summarize again kind of what the, um, what the process is. So let's take a quick look at the cards we'll be making. So we'll have this guy. This is um, a Christmas card. Then we'll also be making a little zany zebra. It's a great little birthday card. And then we're gonna make a little treat. So those are the three things we'll be working on tonight. All right, I think we're gonna start with the zany zebra. And that's his little coordinating envelope as well, so you can see a little look at that. And now this stamp set, this card is based on this stamp set, the Zany Zebra. And it has a lot of really cute sentiments, as you can see. And it's in the annual catalog. And then when you take a look, so let's get our pieces together. So I've already pre-cut some of our pieces to save a little bit of time. So let's just get our pieces organized. So when you take a look at our card, you'll see that the, the zebra is stamped on this little, this little shape. And that actually comes from the Hippo and Friends dies. So let me give you a quick peek at these. I use these dies all the time. So when I get my Stampin' Up! dies, I always go ahead and buy the air conditioner vents, uh, the magnetic pieces, and then I glue them on the cardboard that comes with it, and then I put my, my stuff on there. So we'll be using, I cut the pieces out of this, this shape, but there's also a lot of other great shapes. And I go ahead and I, when I first get my set, I kind of die cut a bunch of different things so I can kind of see how they layer up, you know. It gives you an idea of what they look like and how to put them together. So I've already pre-cut those for us tonight. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a little stamping. Let's move, let's see, that's our envelope. We're gonna move that over there. So I already have my card base. And then it's gonna just be a little bit of stamping on here. And I've already mounted my stamps on my blocks to get us started. So we will start first with the black ink. So this is our memento ink and it's a felt pad. So it's a very hard pad. So you can push down hard to ink up your stamp. So this one I'm gonna push and twist and then flip it over so I could see if I have enough coverage. It looks like I might need a little more. Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I am gonna stamp him near the bottom. I try not to stick my head in the camera. We'll hold it down for a second so the ink transfers and then lift them up so we have our cute little zebra guy. Let me get my, my cleaner out. Okay. 
Next, we're gonna use Magenta Madness. Now this card is black, white, and hot pink, my favorite color. So the Magenta Madness is um, a brighter pink than the Melon Mambo. I liked Melon Mambo, but I love this one way more. So we open our new ink pads. We're gonna go ahead. And now these are soft foam ink pads. So if you push as hard as you did on the black one, you're gonna end up with ink wherever you don't want it. So you gently tap it, move it around a couple times. Again, I always like to flip it over, make sure I have good coverage, and then straight down and straight up. And you'll see this one has like a fun little um, fading to it, so it's not solid lines. So that's normal to see that. And then we're gonna do, oh, I better close that black ink. I'm gonna end up with something extra. So now we're gonna add just a few little stars. So we'll put one guy down there, ink that guy up. Maybe we'll put him there. And then some over here. So that looks fun. Um, so let's see, do we wanna finish the rest of our stamping? So like we did before, it's always nice to have not so naked envelopes. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp that while we have the ink out. I guess we'll have to open the black back up now. And then for this one, I'm just gonna ink up a little bit of his face. So I don't need to ink up his whole body. And then we're gonna go ahead and just stamp him off the side. So it just has him peeking out on the envelope. Gives you a really cute look. And then you know that there's something cool in there and it's not a bill. And we're gonna give him a few stars. So we'll just stamp those on there. All right, that looks good. So we'll set that guy aside. We'll close up our ink because we're done stamping this card. Put that off to the side as well. All right, now we're gonna assemble our card. Now I like to use my liquid glue. Gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the little zebra. Little goes a long way. So you don't have to put a ton of glue on there. It'll ooze out on you. Just kind of center him on there. And now for this card, I used the in color pack of paper. So there's a couple different patterns in here. So for the first card I did, I used the dots. And then for this card, I cut the other pattern out and it has a little bit of words in different languages and then the wood grain. So your pack of paper comes with all different in colors. So I decided to change it up for this card. So I think I'm gonna use the wood grain. I like that. I like that side a little better. So again, we're gonna go ahead, put a little glue. Center it on our black piece of paper. And see if it, with the liquid, you have a little bit of room to line it up better. Hopefully I'm in camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and glue this down and you can decide, you know, kind of where you wanna put it on your card. I like it off to the side a little bit. So again, a little bit more glue. And set that about here. And let it go down. And then we're gonna go ahead and use some dimensionals. Let's see, where do I have those? So we're gonna use that dimensionals to pop him up. So we're gonna put a few on here. Actually, maybe more than a few. I like my dimensionals. I don't want it to be all saggy when it goes through the mail. So we'll pull off our little pieces. I have to say hot pink is one of my and black are one of my favorite color combinations. So I was very excited when I put this guy together. Okay, that looks cute. And then we're gonna put him about there. So again, we'll put a little more liquid glue around the outside. And then we're gonna place him over here. We're almost done, so it comes together pretty quick. 
And then to embellish it a little bit, if you take a look, I have some in color dots that I used. So we'll go ahead and open this guy up. Grab my tool. See if I can get underneath there. Nope, I'm gonna have to use my pointier tool. So let's see. There we go. So the solid black, the way these are not see-through dots, they work out really nice on the black paper. They show through really well. And we got one more. I'm gonna put him on here. All right, so that's fun. And what's nice is if you use your in-colors, you can change it up. It could be for a boy's birthday. You can use that pack of in-color paper and be able to do the same exact thing, but just change up your ink colors. So that's our completed card for this guy. You'll have to tell me which one you like better, if you like the dots or the, the wood grain. So we'll go ahead and clean up this card, get ready for the next one. Move some of these guys out of the way. All right, so up next is our Christmas card. So this one we have to do a little bit of embossing. Oop, there goes my tool. So again, let's take a look at our card. So this is the card we'll be making. And I have some of the pieces already pre-cut. So we have our card base and our envelope some more die cut pieces and some gold foil. And then this one, I went ahead and I stamped the envelope and I also did stamp the inside of this one. So you'll see, it's got a cute sentiment and some trees. So the different products we'll be using in this card are from a couple of different, different products. So the little trees come from the snow front. So we use some of those little trees and this one I bought last Christmas, I was super excited and hadn't had a chance to use it very much. So I'm glad it kind of coordinates like all Stampin' Up! stuff. And then here's another card just to give you an idea. I made this with that snow front. So it has a watercolor look. All right, what else did we use in this? And then the sentiments, so the Merry Christmas comes out of a wish for everything. It's a big stamp set. And it has a lot of different holidays on here. So it has a Christmas and a Merry. So that's what we're gonna use from there. And then the inside has the Merry Little Wish for Joy this season. And it also has a nice Hanukkah stamp. So if you're looking for something to do inside Hanukkah stamp, it has New Year's, trick or treat, Grateful Heart, Easter, Mother's Day, and Father's. So it has really nice sentiments for the inside of your card as well. And then the, um, the rectangle that we're using is from a Stitch So Sweetly die cut set. So we're using this largest one. And that's what I used to cut that green piece in Garden Green. So that gives you an idea of the different products we're using for those. And then we're gonna use two embossing folders. This one is the Tasteful Texture and it's from the annual catalog. And it gives you a nice uh, weave look to it. And then the other one is the Forest Evergreen Trees and that's a 3D embossing folder and that comes from the holiday catalog. So let's get the rest of our products out of here. We need to do a little stamping and then I guess we can do a little embossing. So let's see. First we'll fold our card, card base. Take our bone folder, where are you? There you are. So we're gonna use that to make a nice crease in our card. Try not to stick it in my glue. So that gives us our card base. We're gonna set that aside. We'll set aside our envelopes. Move those guys over there. Actually, we're gonna stamp that guy. All right, so we're gonna use our garden green ink. That matches our garden green paper. Again, Stampin' Up! coordinates everything for you makes it nice and easy. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp Merry Christmas 
Again, tap, tap, tap. You don't want to push too hard. It looks like I have good coverage. And we're going to wing it, so we'll see how we can stamp straight across. And I can't really get my head over there. Well, it's a little crooked. It's not too bad. Again, it's a little harder because I can't put my head where the camera's at. Wow, that one's a little wild. Let's try the other side and see how we do. So... Yep, I'm going to be a little crooked again. Tap, tap. All right, that one might be a little better. We'll go with that one. So we'll clean off our ink. Take our scissors. And we'll just cut a little straight line. Put the other guy over here because we don't like him as much. All right, now we'll take the card. Let's do some inside stamping. So while we have our green out, we're gonna go ahead and stamp the inside. And when you're doing the sentiment, if it doesn't come out straight, you can always stamp on another piece of paper and then put it on the inside over the top of it. So that looks pretty straight. I think we'll keep that one. But if not, what you can do, I made one in advance just in case I came out crooked. I just punched it out on a different piece of paper and you can always cover it up. So don't worry if you go crooked on that guy. There's always ways to fix things. Alrighty, so now we need some trees. So I've gone ahead and put the photopolymer block, um, stamps on here. And you can put two more than one stamp on a block so that makes it easier and on the trees i want to stamp off so i'm going to ink them up gently i'm going to stamp off once and then stamp on the card and then that way it gives me a little bit lighter look to the trees now on the envelope i want to go ahead and make that dark so i'm just going to go ahead and stamp that in the corner all right, I think that was all of our stamping. So we'll go ahead and move these pieces up here because we have a little bit of embossing to do. And I'm gonna bring the big shot over. So well, I guess it's not a big shot anymore. It's a Stampin' and Cut emboss machine. It's a Stampin' Up version. So let me grab that. All right, I might need a little bit more workspace. We'll have to see how this goes. I'm gonna move some things around to move them out of here. Move our little pieces over here. Our completed car, I'm trying not to crush it. All righty, let's see, are we in, in view so you can kind of see what we've got going on? Okay, so first we'll emboss this uh, very vanilla piece. So the new Stampin' Up! machine you'll see is foldable, so it's nice for storage. So the little sides fold up, and then you can fold up the other side so it doesn't take as much space. And they've gone ahead and put a little instruction manual on here. So we are using the Tasteful Texture 3D embossing folder. And I put little labels on there so I can remember which ones are which. So 3D embossing uses panel four. And they numbered it for us. So there's number four. So we will go ahead. And there's also a line at the bottom of your embossing folder where you can line it up. Sorry about the reflection. Put it in there, you make a sandwich. And then you just roll it through. The new embossing machine really does a nice job with die cutting and embossing gives you a really solid look. So I only went through it one time, but you can see the amount of detail that's on there. So we're gonna set that aside. We have one more piece to emboss. So this time we're gonna do the gold foil. So we're gonna take the gold foil and pick which part of the trees we like and where you want them to be. So I think I like those trees. Maybe a little taller. Hang on, I want more tree. Maybe 
like that. Okay. And you always want to send your, your seam through. It keeps it from cracking. And again, we're, it's 3D, so we're going to use the gray layer, and we're going to run it through. Ooh, that sun stuff is spinning. All righty. Let's take a look at that guy. So now we have our embossed trees. This came out pretty. All right, so let's move some of these away. So we're going to move this out of our way. And we can finish assembling our card now. So we'll bring our pieces back in. <clears throat> Take our finished card so we can see what that looks like. All right, you can see that. And then here's our started card. Our little pieces. So again, we're gonna go ahead and glue our pieces together. So I'm gonna start with my foil. Now be careful when you go by the edges on here. When the foil oozes out, it gets extra sticky. And maybe because it, it's embossed, I might need a little extra in the middle. All right, let's see, am I on screen? That looks pretty good. I think you guys can see what I'm doing. And then you're just gonna layer it up. Center it, flip it over, I think that'll help. So I don't get sticky fingers all over the foil. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. And now make sure your card's facing the right way. <clears throat> Decide which side of the embossed or debossed side that you like. I like the embossed up. Again, we're gonna go ahead, put some liquid glue. And again, you can use your snail or your stamp and seal or whatever your favorite adhesive is. I just like the wiggle room that this gives me in case I put it down crooked. So we're gonna go ahead, flip that over, try to center it. Okay, let's see. I think I'll go ahead and glue this guy down. You can use some dimensionals on your sentiment. I kind of liked the flat look, so we're gonna go with flat. Glue him down. Alrighty, coming together nice. All right, I'm gonna try to tie some ribbon on screen for you guys. This should be fun. I'm not the best ribbon tire. So we're just gonna do a little square knot and see if we can get that to work. So, let's see. And this ribbon is really pretty. It's old olive on one side and pretty peacock on the other. And even though we're using garden green cardstock, it still gives it a really pretty look together. So let's see, we can get a nice knot out of here. All right, that gives me an idea of how long I want the ribbon. Just gonna trim it. Get that guy out of my way. Oh, my knot's not that great Look, <laughs> Let's try it again without that spool in the way. All right, so we're gonna do a little twisting. And again, you it's two-sided ribbon, so it's gonna give you a different look. Fingers are gonna not cooperate tonight. So, all right, now you know what not to do. Let's see, Mr. Ribbon. We're gonna try one more time, and then if not, we'll call it good. So we wanna do right over left. I think I need my Boy Scouts, that's what I need. And then left over right. Alrighty, I think this one's gonna be a little better. If not, we're gonna go with them. All right, we're just gonna go with them. So, it's not as pretty as it could be, but we can play with it later. All right. Here's my big dimensionals. So again, we're gonna use some dimensionals on this guy. Yeah, I need to switch my ribbon around a little bit. But we'll fix that later. All right, so now you know it's not always perfect. You could also do like a little square knot. You can do a little tail coming out the side. So let's decide where we want that ribbon. 
And then we can always fix that later. Oh, it just bugs me so much. Okay, well, let's at least get rid of that frayed piece. I don't want to trim it too short because I do want to try to retie it. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and set this down here. Use our dimensionals to pop them up. And then there we go. Actually, that knot, I can live with that knot, I think. We're going to go with that kind of knot. Perfect. All right, now I like that better. Let's trim him right there. Call it good. All right, so there's our card. And then we have our inside. Something wasn't too bad. It went together pretty quick. We have our coordinating envelopes in the very vanilla. So that was project number two. And again, you'll get all the pieces to make these projects um, with your order. So I'll drop those in the mail to you when you use your host code. Um, if you need help putting in an order, just you can email me, you can text me, you can message me on Facebook. I'd be happy to help. Um, or if you need me to put in the order for you, I can do that too. So just let me know what you need. So we're gonna switch gears and do our last one, which is our little 3D project. So let me do a little straightening up so we have some space to work. Move some things out of the way. I think I need a bigger table. I don't even think that's possible. This table's pretty big. All right, so let's take a look again. So this is the little treat box. And we're gonna use different paper. So that was plaid tidings paper that I used. And this time I'm gonna use some from Tis the Season. So there's a different pack of paper. So we're gonna go ahead and use this paper. And it uses the little treats bundle. So this is from the holiday catalog. And it has lots of different sentiments so you can do different um, holidays with it. So let's see. Oops, look at, I always cut out the little embellishments. So again, I'm gonna take our dies out. We're gonna pull over our big shot in a minute. I'll just get the rest of our supplies out of here. So we need our Santa hat, some paper, sentiment. I already pre-cut the tag to save us a little bit of time. And then we're gonna use some real red ink. So we'll set that over here. Oh, look at that, I already cut my ribbon. Woohoo! All right, I saved me some time. That one, we're not gonna do anything too fancy with cutting. So before I cut this one, well actually I'll cut it and then I'll show you some other projects you can do with it. So, well, we need to do two cuttings. So let's stamp. All right, change my mind one more time. So let's do some stamping first. So let's go ahead and open our ink pads. So this one we're using real red. And again, this is our foam pads, so they're squishy. So you want to ink up gently, move it around, and then you're gonna just stamp directly down on your little tag, and then back up. There's my ink pad clean. And then we're gonna do the Santa hat. And then we'll die cut them out. If you don't have the dies, you could always fussy cut him. But I love when there's a die, it saves you time. Plus I don't have to fussy cut. <laughs> and that's always good. So let's put these off to the side. So we're gonna use the die cuts from here. So there is a little hat that cuts him out. And then we can also take another look at some of the other ones in here. So there's a ring and some ornaments and a present. There's a couple other shapes that you can use in the spider for Halloween. So there's a couple other dies. So we're gonna need this guy too. Let's set him over here. Go grab our big shot again. And we'll cut out a few things. So now we'll be using different plates on our big shot. I think I might need more light too. All right. So let's try not to squish what we have. Move some stuff out of the way so you can kind of see catty corner what I've got going on. So now we're die cutting. So we're using thin dies. So we need plate one, which is this. We need plate two, which is a thin die adapter. So we put that guy on top. And then we need the two clear plates, number three, for cutting. So you never want to cut on these. You always want to make sure you have a clear plate underneath you. So, 
Let's go ahead. Yeah, sorry, you got the ring light on there. All right, so we got that. We're gonna cut out our little Santa hat, make our sandwich, and then just wheel it through. And then voila, you have a cute little Santa hat. You didn't have to cut him with your scissors. So we'll set him aside. And we'll go ahead and get ready to cut our little treat box. So your little treat box kind of fits on diagonal. You want to just try to fit it corner to corner on your six by six paper. And then I'm going to roll it through. Let me move it a little bit so I can wheel it through. Alrighty. And we've got our little treat box. So let's move some stuff out of the way again. So let's move this big shot. I'm gonna put him back over to the side. We'll move our dies over there. And then let's see if you can tell. It embosses for us also. So there are little embossing lines that you just gently wanna crease to make your little box. So, and the paper's cute, so you could really use any side, use any pattern. So we're doing these. These would be great little Christmas treats for friends or table settings. I was gonna use them for Thanksgiving table setting. All right, I think we have most of that done. Now you'll see there's these little slots, so you don't even have to glue it if you don't want to. So they just slide in, one into the other. They slide together, and then they come up like that. But I don't want to close them because we need to put our pieces on. So we'll decide which side is our front. Again, we'll do a little liquid glue. And you could use dimensionals on this if you wanted to. So let's see, where's the crease? So I want it part way. I'm going to save room for my little Santa hat. That guy, we're going to use a dimensional. Pull those guys back out. As you can see, it's well-loved. I've been through a lot of those. Okay, we just stick that on there. And I think we'll overlap it a little. So now you have that. And then you can fit all kinds of different treats in here. Giardelli treats that fit in here. You could put hand sanitizer. This uh, mint patties fit in there. All right. So look how cute that is. So that is an easy way to do a treat box. I don't always love cutting 3D items, but this makes it so easy. And then you can run any kind of ribbon or twine through here. I'm just going to use some white. Just tie it in a little knot, nothing fancy. So you could do it this way and tie another piece of twine around it. But for our purposes, I just think it looks cute. We'll do one knot, you could do a double knot, you could do a bow. So, there's a little treat container. I thought I'd show you, I made a bunch, I had a blast with these when I first got it. So, let's take a look at some of the other items you can do with this. So I have a little tray of goodies. So this is one that I made for Halloween. Put a little rhinestone on there. That's the circle that comes with it. And this is a stitch circle that I use from another set and then it has the die for that. And here I was talking about, you could tie twine. So there's a little Halloween one. This was fall, so I thought this would be a cute Thanksgiving play setting. Let's see, this one. I used the die cut for the wedding ring and that's great for a little thank you present. And this uses our crinkle ribbon. This one's using crinkle ribbon and I tied it in a bow this time and it's a birthday treat and I used the birthday sentiment out of the stamp set. This one I actually did out of the cardstock. I don't know if you can tell, I used the glitter paper, I punched that out, and then I just stamped tone on tone. So that is um, seafoam with seafoam ink. I just stamped about, and this is the other little tag, and it has a little two from, so you can put a little present in there too, and that's that same ribbon I just used, but this one I did a double knot. And then you can even make it into a little basket. So this would be cute for Easter even. 
And that might be retired paper. I think it is. I think the paper's retired, but the ribbon is current. So again, these are all from the stamp set. So we could take a look at the stamp set. I put it somewhere. So there's a lot of versatility. I think I used almost everything except maybe the candy treats, those guys, and the flag. I think those are the only ones I haven't used yet. You can also use them to make cards. So I did play around with that last night too. And have a card for you. So here's a card. And all I did was I used the Dainty Diamonds embossing folder here, some of the plaid paper, and then I just cut it in half and used some twine from one of our suites. But all of our stuff coordinates so nice. So this is from a different suite. And then I just did that same sentiment. And this is that same rectangle. Might be one size smaller than what we used on the Christmas card that we just did. So that is some ideas of what you can do with this suite. So there's lots of great things and it comes in a bundle. So I'll take a look at the catalog with you. I tagged this place for you. Let's see. So that's our embossing folder we used on the last card. We always put little checks next to what I buy. Otherwise I buy two. I can't remember. <laughs> Keep track of what it is. So in our holiday catalog, this is the little treats bundle. So here's some more ideas. You can fold your box differently. Let's see if I'm in screen. So you can fold your box differently and leave it open, fold down a flap. Here's some other types of ribbon. You can do a belly band. They did one here. They made a card front with that. I've seen bookmarks out of it. This one, they put some more treats in there and they've embossed the actual cardstock. So there's lots of different options for this suite. So um, this one actually is not a suite, it's a bundle. So you can buy it as a bundle which means you save 10%. So instead of buying the dies and the stamps separate, if you buy them as a bundle and you'll see like the little 10% save button, then that means you get 10% off and you just put in the different item number than the two separates. So that is that guy. And um, I think that's it for all the cards. So let's go over and take a look at what we made again. So we have our Zany Zebra. Let's move these guys out of the way. We have our Christmas card. And then we have our little Christmas treat container. So when you place your order using the host code for this week by Monday, you can earn all of these items for free. So I'll, you know, you, this will all be die cut for you and cut. You'll have to make your own knot. Good luck with that. Uh, but then you'll just have to use your own stamps. So you'll have to stamp your own zebra or if you want to use some other kind of stamps that you have. So. You would just have to do the stamping pieces, but all the plain die cuts you would have as part of your kit, and I'll write up some instructions. You'll get those as well. So, um, again, it's for a $35 order, so that's the host code, and um, I'll post the door, for, door prize form shortly for you guys, and then if you share the video, you'll also be put in a drawing to receive the products that we made tonight, and if you win the door prize, you'll get the original set of cards I made plus the little embellishment as a little thank you for filling out the door prize and answering the questions. So I hope you guys had fun tonight. Um, I'm going to try to do this every month on the third Thursday. Hope you'll join me again. Um, even if it's just for some inspiration and to hang out, I miss hanging out with you guys. So I think it's fun to be able to stamp and share some cards with you. Um, thanks very much and have a great night.